The shoulder is a fabulous joint. I've got to say that I'm a shoulder surgeon, but it is really amazing. It allows us to get our arm in all sorts of positions, but this comes at a price. The shoulder is the most commonly dislocated joint in the body. But what holds it in place? Muscles are important, but they're not key players. The most important structures are deep inside the shoulder. Attached to the labrum is the shoulder capsule, and within the shoulder capsule are thickenings, and these thickenings are important in providing stability when the shoulder is placed in positions of risk, specifically in this position. The shoulder can also come out on its back, out like this, and someone pushes a force in the front of the shoulder, it can pop out the back. And I guess the best il illustration of that for me is an offensive lineman who's protecting his quarterback and he gets hit from the front, he can sublux or dislocate his shoulder out the back. The other scenario is where there's a lot of load placed through the long head of the biceps. For instance, a scaffolder who falls off, grabs hold of the scaffolding and puts a lot of load through his long head of biceps. He can rip off the top of his labrum and cause what we call a superior labral tear or a slap tear. So what happens when the shoulder dislocates? The ball comes out the front of the shoulder and the back of the ball gets jammed against the glenoid causing a divot. We call that a heel sax lesion. The labrum on the front that I talked about before gets pulled off, wrenched off the front of the shoulder, or what we call a Bankart lesion. Now let's say you've dislocated your shoulder. Most likely it's going to be a traumatic anterior dislocation. What should you do at that point? Well my advice as a general rule is if a joint is dislocated it's better to put it back in place as soon as possible, as soon as practicable. What I would first of all recommend is standing up if you can, hold on to a structure or another person and let your arm dangle down and do gentle moving around and around and you may be able to just unlock it yourself. If those measures don't work, lie down. Put a towel or something similar underneath your arm and have them pull it up towards your head and then another person should gently pull on your arm and gradually abduct it, in other words, move it away from the body, and this takes the tension off the deltoid. And you want to have them gently put it back, put it into a position where it first gently position. reverse it, bring it back down again. So let's say you've tried those techniques and they haven't worked. Well, then the next is to get more help. You need to have a paramedic available or go to the emergency room. They will give you some sedation, make your muscles relaxed, and pop it back for you. So, okay, your shoulder's back in place. What do we do next? Now, a very clever surgeon called Professor Itoi in Japan found that if you put the arm in a traditional position of a sling, that bank art lesion actually gets worse. The labrum becomes further detached from the anterior glenoid. Now, if you want to treat that bank art lesion without surgery, then Itoi has come up with his own protocol, which initially consists of a plaster cast, putting the arm out in this position, and more recently, a specially designed sling or brace to put the arm in this position. And he recommends three weeks in that sling or brace, day and night. No sling, very important, no traditional sling. And in fact, you can start using your shoulder pretty much straight away. It's very safe down in this position here. What you want to avoid, of course, is the position of risk, this position up here. But there's no reason why you can't start using your shoulder pretty much straight away. Now, what, how do we treat this instability in, in the long term? For traumatic anterior instability, it depends on two things. One is your age, and the second is your activity level. If you're young and you have relatively stretchy tissues and you're very active, you're more likely to re-dislocate. And the figures are roughly in someone in the like 18 to 25, around 80 or 90 percent chance of re-dislocating after a first dislocation. As we all get older, there is some advantage that our tissues get tighter. And so if you're in your 30s or 40s, your chance of re-dislocating are much less, probably more like 20 or 30 percent. If you're in the older group, other structures can get injured. Because the shoulder is much tighter, then something else has got to give as well. And that might be the bone, 
causing a fracture, or it might be a tendon. For instance, the supraspinatus rotator cuff tendon can get torn off. In. Now, going back to the younger patient who's dislocated their shoulder for the first time, or someone who's dislocated their shoulder a number of times, then I usually recommend some keyhole surgery. Today, that is fairly non-invasive. It involves coming into a day surgery for a couple of hours. Now we're looking inside a right shoulder. The socket's on the left. The labrum has torn off the front of the shoulder. You can see I'm using my rasp to demonstrate that. Now we're passing a suture through that torn labrum, shuttling the suture through the cannula. Now I'm making two holes, small holes for our anchors, and then passing the suture through the first anchor and placing the first anchor in the first hole. And now we're cutting off the excess suture. We capture some more tissue, shuttle the suture through that, place the suture in the anchor, and then the anchor in that second hole and cutting the excess suture. So now we've reattached the labrum to the front of the shoulder. After the surgery, your arm is placed in a sling and then we start exercises fairly early on. The shoulder labrum takes about six weeks to heal back to bone um, and it's about three months before you can go back to contact sports. The success of this type of surgery in experienced hands is very good. It's in the order of 90 to 95%. So the take home messages are, the shoulder has a great range of motion, but this comes at a price. It's the joint most prone to dislocating. The most common dislocation is out the front and the structures that are torn that are important for shoulder stabilization is the labrum and the associated capsule. These Structures are relatively easy to fix with keyhole surgery. If there's not a label tear and just the shoulder capsule is stretchy, then physiotherapy is the way to go. So I hope this brief video has helped you understand the shoulder, what happens when you dislocate it, and how to manage the shoulder after a dislocation so that you can get back to the activities that you want to do faster. Hello.